Lena put on her gloves and goggles, stood on the stool, and pulled the plug on the peephole. The tip of the plug was cherry red. She kept her head back while a clear flame shot three inches out of the hole. At 1,560 degrees, Wa adjusted her goggles and yanked open the firebox door, throwing in staves as fast as possible while heat whelmed her chest and face. The fire was the color of electric goldfish. When new staves met the flame, Wa heard them crinkle and dissolve. At 1650 degrees, a gaseous orange flame blasted from the peephole. The acrid, ashy smell began to give the stokers a high. The kiln temperatures rose quickly now. So quickly the flame, needing more oxygen, began to suck it from the clay vessels themselves. When the pyrometer read 2010 degrees, Wa eased herself between the stacked wood and the kiln to open the damper. The hair on her arms singed, and she emerged flushed, wiping sweat from her forehead. The kiln looked pregnant, expanding outward, smoke and light pouring from gaps where clay mortar had fallen away. Vina was stoking, the wood meeting flame hissing like bacon in a frying pan. Between Stokes, Wa selected staves, setting them upright against the kiln. As Vina shoved one stave into the firebox, Wa held out the next one. Then they switched places. Wa used a stout piece of green wood to stir the ash over the grate, a sheet of smoke unwinding from the firebox and enveloping her. Vina slid between the kiln and the wall and tapped open the side damper another inch. She drained her water bottle in breathless gulps. In mutual exhaustion, both women sat on separate stools, watching the parameter, waiting for the moment when the heat would stop rising and they would need to stoke again. In the open pit beneath the firebox, embers flared and shifted. Heat, bring it on. Wa could take the heat.